Welcome to another online worship service sponsored by the Congregational Church of Wells as we gather on the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. My continued thanks to the worship team for making these online services possible and thanks to the musicians who contribute so much to these services. There will be a gathering outside the church, weather permitting, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for those who would like to catch up with one another. Bring a chair, a cup of coffee, and of course, a mask. There will be a Zoom meeting of the worship team on Tuesday at one o'clock. A number of our members have expressed interest in gathering for an outdoor worship experience in the midst of this time when COVID-19 prevents us from worshiping in the sanctuary. Consequently, there will be a brief 20-minute prayer service on Sunday, August 16th at 5 p.m. behind the church. Bring your own chair as we gather to reflect on scripture and offer prayers for one another, for those in the church and community, and for all those struggling with the challenges of these troubling times. And now let us join together for our call to worship based on Matthew 14, 22 through 33. We gather together to worship God, who comes to us when we least expect it, who calls us out of the safety of our ordered lives and invites us to join him in the adventure of faith. Let's worship God together. Confidence is shaken in beliefs we thought secure. When the spirit in its sickness seeks but cannot find a cure, God is active in the tensions of a faith not yet mature. Of a faith not yet mature. God is love and thus redeems us in the Christ we crucify. This is God's eternal answer to the world's eternal why. Faith maturing, be content to live and die, be content to live and die. Let us now join together in our opening prayer Again, based on Matthew 14, verses 22 through 33. Gracious God, we gather once again to offer you praise and thanksgiving for your unfailing love and faithfulness, shown most clearly through your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us grace to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, open our eyes to recognize you among us. Give us courage to step out in faith to meet you and confidence to follow where you lead. For you are our God and we are your people, called by your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord. Amen. And now as we offer our joys and concerns this morning, I would like to once again express my thanks to those who are calling or keeping in touch in a variety of ways with members and friends of the church family. The, care, the chair of our care team, Judy Ryan, has asked me to share the following joys and concerns. It is a joy to share that Sue has returned home from rehab, prayers for her continued improvement. Prayers for Jeanette Haggett and her family at the passing of her son-in-law, Ken. Prayers for Tina and Bob Cole's family on the passing of his brother, Mike, for Joe Borse and his family on the passing of Joe's father, the family of Ronald Avery, the family of Bob Bartlett, 
and the family of Ariana Layton. Continued prayers for Maggie and Jim, Mary, Emily, Jennifer, who is recovering from ankle surgery and is doing well, Bobby, and Peter. Prayers for Ellen, Selena, Lisa, David Jr., Paul, John, Bob, Jean and Bruce, Jennifer, Amy, Carrie, Nadine, and Roberta. Prayers for Sandra and Rachel, Courtney, Jean and Neil, Lee and Rita, Donna and Jack, June, Christine, Claire, Marie and Ray. And continued prayers for Cindy, Antonio, Sylvia, Marlene, and Alan and Carol. Prayers also for our summer church family who we are missing. Some who have been coming to Wells and to our church for many years. They are with us in spirit and hopefully some are attending our online services. As we share these prayers before you, Lord, let us also join in our pastoral prayer. Let us pray. God of love and grace, we pray that you enable us to step out in faith through the power of your spirit working within and around us. Help us to have confidence in your presence and to trust in your guidance even when circumstances cause us to doubt that you are with us. Remind us of the words of scripture that teach us that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. We pray for our nation and for our world as we continue to struggle with the ravages of COVID-19. We grieve with those who have lost loved ones and pray for those who are ill, that they might be healed. We lift up in prayer those that we name in our joys and concerns, and we pray that through your loving spirit, they might experience healing, strength, comfort, encouragement, and hope. As we offer these prayers before you, Lord, let us also join for a moment of silence, remembering those concerns that lie deep within each one of our hearts. Let us pray. Let us also pray in the words that Jesus taught the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. verses 22 through 33, and it talks about Jesus when he walks on water. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they cried out. They cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. 
Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when they saw the wind, he was afraid and began sinking, crying out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt me? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Thus ends our scripture reading today. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen, amen. Have you ever heard the story about a man who gets too close to the edge of the Grand Canyon, loses his balance, and slips over the edge? Just before falling a thousand feet, he grabs a root sticking out from the edge. Help me, he pleads. Is there anyone up there? Help me, save me. Is there anyone up there? A voice answers, I am the Lord. I can save you. Do you believe in me? Do you really want me to help you? Oh yes, Lord, I believe in you, the man blurts out. More than you'll ever know. Please help me. Okay, the Lord says, I'll save you. Now, let go. Say what, the desperate man responded. Just let go of that root you're holding on to, and I'll save you. You have to trust me. After a long pause, the man shouts out, Is there anyone else up there? I wonder if Peter and the disciples felt a little bit like that man as he dangled precariously from that flimsy root. After all, the disciples are in the midst of their own crisis. They are out on a boat, having been sent away by Jesus. Jesus has gone to a private place to pray after, after having fed the multitudes, an event that we reflected upon last Sunday. While Jesus prays, a terrible storm develops, tossing the disciples' helpless boat in every direction. We are told that Jesus approaches the storm-tossed boat by walking on the water in a non-anxious and matter-of-fact manner. As afraid as the disciples are of the storm, they're even more fearful about this figure that is approaching them, whom they assume is some sort of ghost. Peter, the ever-impetuous one, the one who had a reputation to act and speak first, and then think later, Peter calls out to this person walking toward them on the water and says, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. To which Jesus simply responded by saying, come. At this point, Peter might very well have felt like that unfortunate visitor to the Grand Canyon, clinging for dear life to a fragile root. But you know what? Peter overcomes his fears, and unlike the other disciples who fearfully cling to the boat for life, Peter takes the risk and heeds Jesus' command. And you know what? At first, the impossible becomes possible. Peter, the simple fisherman, was empowered to perform a miraculous feat. He was walking on the water. As long as he focused on Jesus, who was standing before him, he is empowered to do what he would never have been able to do with his own powers. But then he becomes fearful, the threat of the wind distracts him from his focus on Jesus, and he begins to sink. At that point, Peter is left to his own meager powers. He is overcome by his fear of the turbulent waters and he cries out to Jesus, Lord, save me. Jesus responds to Peter's plea. Jesus saves Peter. Jesus stills the water. And then Jesus asks, 
You of little faith, why did you doubt? What is Jesus teaching us in this remarkable account describing his walking on the water and Peter's tentative attempt to do the same? I believe that this event teaches us what is meant to step out in faith and how doing so requires that we put our focus squarely on Christ. We learn these lessons through the eyes of, and ears of Peter. For Peter represents you and me and everyone else who seeks to be a follower of Jesus. Peter shows us that, first of all, faith requires risk. We have to risk to overcome our fears and step out into the storm-tossed waves of life. When we do, we discover that incredible things can happen if we keep our eyes on Jesus. The importance of stepping out in faith is illustrated by Reverend Dr. William Willimon, renowned United Methodist preacher, in a sermon entitled, How Will You Know If It's Jesus? If Peter had not ventured forth and not obeyed the call to walk on the water, then Peter would never have had this great opportunity for recognition of Jesus and rescue by Jesus. I wonder if too many of us are merely splashing about in the safe shallows and therefore have too few opportunities to test and deepen our faith. The story today implies if you want to be close to Jesus, you have to venture forth out of the sea. You have to prove his promises through trusting his promises through risk and venture. But you know, when we take risks, it doesn't always work out. Peter had great initial success until the winds of the storm distracted him from his focus on Jesus, and it was then that he started to sink. Sometimes we sink too. Sometimes our fear, our doubts, our anxieties get the best of us. But even as we sink or fail or stumble, we know one thing, Christ is with us reaching out his hand to save us, to protect us, to give us second chances and new life. It's like learning to ride a bike. My father used to tell me that when he was first teaching me to ride my new red bike, I would do all right as long as he held on to the back of the seat. But as soon as he would let go, I would stop in my tracks and tumble to the ground but my father would be right behind me to pick me up and help me to get back on my bike. After several attempts, I was finally able to ride by myself, but only because I knew that my father was there to pick me up if I fell. Likewise, Peter was able to continue a fruitful ministry because he knew that Jesus, the risen Christ, would be there to help him up when he fell down, to save him, in times of trials. This story also teaches us something about having little faith. Remember that Jesus said to Peter, you of little faith, why did you doubt? On the one hand, it was his little faith that prevented him from walking further toward Jesus. His doubts got the best of him. But on the other hand, I suspect that it was the same little faith the kind of little faith that Jesus compared to the mustard seed, the smallest of the seeds that produces a great bush. It was this little mustard seed faith which enabled Peter to get out of the boat in the first place. For as Jesus says elsewhere in Matthew, for I tell you, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. I know a woman who is now an ordained minister whose journey began as a Sunday school teacher. When asked to be a teacher, her initial response was to say that she didn't feel qualified. She started with little faith, but then overcame her fears. Then she became a member and sub subsequently chair of the Board of Christian Education. Then she became a staff person for the church, which led her to go to seminary, which led her 
to respond to a call to ordination. What started as little faith became for this woman a lifelong vocation. The story of the disciples on the stormy seas forces us to ask ourselves, will we seek the safety of the boat, huddled together in fear, or will we take the risk of stepping out in faith, even if it's a little faith, so that we can do great things in Christ's name? The Congregational Church of Wells is profoundly thankful to all those who have continued to mail in pledges and donations in spite of these remarkably difficult times. Through your gifts, the church is able to continue to minister with strength and serve as a beacon of hope in these troubled times. And now let us join for our benediction. God calls us to step out in faith, to follow where he leads, even if what he calls us to do seems impossible. So let's go from here with courage, trusting in God's presence and power, and eager to do God's will. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and within you, wherever you find yourself this week. Amen. Take each moment and live each moment with peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth. Let it begin.